pressuring and scrapping with most of the characters that he had played with previously in some in a lot of games while ray goes through like another banjo a belmont and he's showcasing just how potent his own defense can be so it's gonna be a tale of two stories and a tale of two play styles for sure yeah, all right, and now we get right into it. Oh, Ray starting off with some solids, somehow managing to knock him back and forth, but keep him locked down on that middle platform, racking up 69%. 88, uh, still a single hit yet to connect here. Tejuice was looking really good just a moment ago in winner's quarters, but okay, now he is... Let's see if he can actually do something now that he's gotten that singular hit in, but oh, for the most part... It feels like Ray is in command at the moment. Yeah, for sure. Like this, this, this game started off so strong for Ray, and it doesn't look like it's gonna stop anytime soon because of how Ray is changing up the tempo that we were expected. Like we talked about immovable objects, right? But Ray is the one firing Wonder Wings like it's nothing, and like running forward to make sure he has these ledge trap, going for these hard two frames that will result in stocks. And they have been they've been netting Ray so much of the position of the good positioning that it's almost awkward for Tejus to play around a surprisingly frantic Ray. Yeah, but now that we're entering the kill percent sort of stage, all right, there we go. Actually, picking up that stock is huge for Ray. He doesn't have to worry about like, oh no, now my also amazing SDI right there. Like, wow. Um. But 112%, if you are Utopian Ray, you're still relatively comfortable, but definitely the fear has to begin because one misplay just like that, which time in his face, fist to the face, and that's going to be completely even stocks. Utopian Ray started off this game really, really good, like really good, but... Tejus immediately evening it up. Whatever advantage he had, they are neck and neck at the moment. Okay. Big combo possibly getting started for Tejus. 47%, and I really like that. Just that knowing so that the active hitbox was right there and is able to uh is able to just switch time. Yeah, it's fortunate for Ray that he has those uh, big tools that say, like, hey, you can't interrupt with me. You can't interrupt me while I'm doing this move five times this talk which is huge because it got him out of that dangerous spot. And getting out of one Bayonetta combo, for, especially at high percent, is going to really tell a difference because if Bayonetta can't kill you when she has the chance to, stocks can linger for a dangerously long time. Yeah, 120%, that back, back air after back air. None of them finding the mark. Somehow that down air getting a reverse meaningless hitbox Banjo staying alive here, Utopian Ray, all of this rage on his body. Can he actually convert it to a kill? He does, Wondering from across the stage. 152% and Tejus was looking really good there, but now he's actually struggling. No more Wonder Wings, this stock that he has to worry about, but nonetheless, he has to actually find a way to kill this Banjo. This bear that seems to be invincible at the moment. He can barely even lock him down, let alone take the stock right here. And I want you guys to keep in mind the amount of times these witch times are coming out. It resulted in a stock earlier in the game, but at every time you land a witch time, the time that is slowed down gets shorter and shorter with every successful hit. So now that that time might not even be enough to f to charge a smash attack, let alone find any sort of kill move. And 231 is starting to look insurmountable. I mean, if he takes this stock right here, right now, it, he only 64%, that's not so bad, but at the moment, it feels like Utopian Ray just knows the kill options that he's looking for. That crab just grabs the wrong way. I think a grab at this point, even down throw from mid stage might be able to do it. But, like, again, now Utopian Ray going over the platforms. No, he is approaching. He gets back aired in the face for it. Now we have even stocks, but not even percents by any means. One Wonder Wing will be expired in order to deal out even more damage here. Tejus has to be so, so careful. Bayonetta is a fragile character. He's throwing out these aerials, trying to afterburner kick 
all around him try to dance here. And so far, those dance moves are working out. 45% finally getting these combos started. But one false step against Utopian Ray might mean the death of him. Great down throw to up smash. Going to be converting that stock. And that's game one for Utopian Ray. But very, very back and forth. Yeah, it started to look like it was scooping away from Tejus a little bit towards the beginning of, uh, towards the, in the middle of the game, and especially in that stock too, but for a quick 45, but overextension on that grab, and good, uh, good idea on Ray's part to just go for those couple extra pummels, make it even harder for Tejus to mash out of it before committing to the down throw, so the up smash, as quick as that move is, frame 9 by the way, uh, it's... It was absolutely going to scoop up even if Tejus was able to mash out, which he was able to, but it did not matter. Ooh. Yeah, that was such a good witch. It's just sometimes it can be difficult. Like when you're a projectile character, just the fact that Bayonetta has a instant answer to the, a lot of projectiles can make things difficult. But anyway, getting back right into it we're gonna have game two here uh it looks like same stage i can definitely under why uh, i don't stage was really the issue that last game um but yeah now we're getting right into it here blow for blow remember last game started off really well for utopian ray and i mean it went back and forth but he did end up managing to take it as we move into game two here much much more blow for blow being evenly dished out both of these players a downer okay a lot of times ray has been really priming for the two frame but it's it's good to see teju start to adjust his recovery routes around that idea because you don't want to let banjo just for free like down tilt at ledge and like constantly reset you so by putting hitboxes above the ledge teju gets rid of that game plan for utopian ray and might even start a combo because of it so Adaptation at its finest, and Tejus will certainly need to down 1-0 on this same stage. Yeah, Utopian Ray now going through aggressively, getting that dash attack. He gets witch timed, but the timer not quite enough. He's going to be living here 126%, though barely outspacing the back air. Another forward throw, not going to be enough to keep him or let, like, take that stock, but oh, he goes the wrong way. I don't know. He had no option, no recourse, it seems. And that's going to be that first stock in a very unfortunate way. I do not think Utopian Ray intended to die from that Wonder Wing. That was probably going to be like a B-reverse grenade or something like that. Um, but nonetheless, if you take juice, take that. And you will absolutely take that because look at this. 45% already growing. Bayonetta combos at these lower percents especially. All right, finally, Banjo getting out of the worst of it, meaning that he could reversal with that Wonder Wing. So far, things not looking too dire for uh, Utopian Ray. And right as I say that, though, 105%. We have seen him survive to some very, very late percent, but I don't think he can just assume that he will. Bayonetta can end stocks very early if you give her the chance. Right and now, this is though, really the prime percent for it, too. Like, things like up tilt will start confirming into back air around this time, and with the smaller size class zones, oh, that witch time will certainly do it. Yeah, like, I mean, when you got it, you got it. Take it away, dude, because that's a that's the kind of the, the pace breakers that Tejus really needs to stop Ray from doing anything. Oh, intercepting, just shutting down that Wonder Wing. At the moment, so far, yeah, he's looking for a stock here, trying to get a gets another down throw re grab. Oh, but not able to keep the chain going. That does it though. Yeah, in the end, doesn't get that much damage racked onto him. Only twelve percent. We once more have an extremely even game between these two. Okay, here we are now. These lower percents though can be really scary if you are Banjo, but if you're Bayonetta, you can get Wonder Winged in the face. Oh, he only has two left. Now, not only is it important for him to maintain those as, you know, a win condition in order to kill, but it could be really huge for recovering as well. So we're probably not going to be seeing Wonder Wings coming out. Oh, we're not going to be seeing him if he's getting in the middle of a combo anyway. The damage output is starting to add up here. Utopian Ray at 94. He, gets, he has all of that invincibility, though. He has to instead opt to punish the end lag of it, which not really able to get the strongest of punishes. But there it is. Hatches that neutral. They're coming down. 
witch timing again. So far, I think that's three or four witch time kills that we've uh, we've seen Teijus get this set so far. Yeah, it's almost like from that game one, Teijus played uh, played witch time heavy early, and then switched to a more a combo oriented like try to go. Uh, try to catch you in the air with ABKs. Try to sweep there, right? you. Yeah, yeah it's back air. Uh, yeah, try to I sweep you up with uh, with heel slides uh, in the late game and really get his combos going. But it got him going a little bit too late. The SD certainly helped. Uh, but by swapping that game plan on its head completely, Tejus was able to put the screws on Ray early, make him feel that pressure, make him feel like he had to conserve his Wonder Wings more frequently for, uh, in order to get out of danger and for crucial, crucial stocks to even up the game. But then towards the end of the game, that's when the Witch Time started to come out and really started to rear, just turn Ray's game plan on its head and turn that counterpunch uh, game state just into a complete detriment. Good stuff on pages, man. Yeah, so these, uh, as, as we said before, they 3 0 each other. Oh, man. No, I'm not going to talk about anything. Utopian Ray has to get back to the stage first here. Oh, not quite able to do it. Zag is okay. Self. <laughs> Alrighty, well, we got a, we got a certainly a game to keep up with as Teju's really. Keeps up with what worked in game two. He wants to give Ray less space to work with. He wants to start catching these jumps with back airs. And like these bullets interrupting Ray even more. Like he only has one Wondering Wing left, but it does not even matter as the grenade pull gets tossed uh, tossed aside by a back air. And man, Tejus is really showing off just how prepared he was how prepared he is to change around his game plan, depending on the pace of the opponent. And Ray is having a little bit of trouble keeping up this immovable object, not looking so immovable anymore, given its current status of the game. Okay. Okay. Oh. All right. Utopian Ray now back on stage. He needs to close out this stock as soon as possible. He's already taken 82. Ooh. I like that. Just reacts instead to the fact that he was rolling on. Does he bring him all the way up to the top, but not enough to actually kill? Nonetheless, all right, finally, Utopian Ray going to be expending on Wonder Wing in order to take the stock. But, oh, look at this. Yeah, an entire full clean stock ahead for Tejuice as he now is able to, it seems like he's taking a more defensive approach. Oh, nobody's always, it seems like he's always able to punish those, uh, those grenades, always ready to witch time them if they're in range of him. And now at this point, Utopian Ray, it feels like he can't use that option the same way he does it. And let's not forget, pulling grenades is also a movement option, which means that now he, that movement option is no longer available to him. Going to be converting that grenade into Wonder Wing for some solid damage, but this is his last stock. Every Wonder Wing he expends is actually going to be the last uh -oh. possible one. We hear a lag spike. What's happening? Uh, okay. The, oh, another one. Oh, another one. Oh. And rip. I mean, it wouldn't be an ultimate Wi-Fi set if we this didn't happen once. Uh, they are still in the arena, so All hopefully right. it was just a disconnect. It was a disconnect from the spectator and not from each other, and they still aren't experiencing lag, so the game can go on no. uh, without worry. But with how Tejus was playing, there's certainly a lot for Ray to come back from and to shore up with his game state. Uh, not only with several misinputted uh, B reverse, uh, B reverse egg, uh, B reverse eight grenade eggs coming out as Wonder Wings in the opposite direction, which is just kind of unfortunate. But Tejus really looked like he had a beat on whenever Ray wanted to jump and was so willing to trade. Like I think we see it in this uh, in this uh, clip right here, because he air dodges back, but he jumps to pull grenade, and Tejus is 100% willing to take that trade. Like that's a sweet spot back air for like a what 10%. GG's. <laughs> yeah. Now, here's a question. Do you think that Utopian Ray might go talent? Do you feel like that Banjo has been constructed to the point where he cannot feel comfortable going this character? I feel like that's an excellent... Uh, it, it's something to absolutely bring up, for sure. 
because of how Banjo, not necessarily from a sheer tool and like frame data wise, but from an attribute wise, Bayonetta is so much faster, has so much more like macro mobility that it can be hard for Banjo to reliably set anything up or even just gain and maintain space without Bayonetta being in his face as Tejuice was almost constantly at a distance where Ray had to respect those things like short hop uh, afterburner kick. So switching to Palutena, who can throw out these invincible moves, can challenge Bayonetta in the air a lot more reliably, and more, more importantly, have raw, powerful kill moves without the need of any sort of setup beyond the normal amount of like conditioning that players do on a game-to-game -game basis. That feels like a very strong counter pick that we might see Ray be going to, if not even just a, if not also a stage swap. All right, yeah, we did see Ray pop out for just a moment, so I would not be surprised if that was in fact the confirmation that uh, he is switching to Palutena. In which case, a lot of what we've seen in these past three games might not be quite as relevant. For one, the witch time, like we would. Yep, there it is. The Palutena coming out. Uh, not going to be able to witch time grenade for free anymore. Uh, there and is no grenade. in terms of edge guarding, I feel like Palutena can at the very least scare Bayonetta with threat of explosive flame and that sort of thing. So, I mean, there's not much that can actually scare Bayonetta off stage. But anyway, getting right into it here, we do have the 2 1 lead for Tejuice. And oh. The Bayonetta counterpick, let's see how it ends up faring here. So far, not actually able to land a single hit quite yet. Oh, right as I say that, oh, that's one thing that the witch, uh, sorry, not the witch, I'm the bat within rather, is already twice now being used. It seems that that uh, could be a difference maker here. But then again, that requires air dodging and it seems that Utopian Ray is maybe starting to pick up on that fact. I like the idea of crouching underneath the bullets, shielding that heel slide just in time. Oh, but maybe waiting out a little bit too much and got down it for it. He was expecting the air dodges from before, but Tejus is already one step ahead. God, look how much looking. space Ray is giving on ledge here. He's now fully willing to utilize not only Palutena's speed to make up ground and to fully abuse that fact, but also he's letting Tejus come back to ledge because Palutena's neutral can be so frustrating for characters with uh, that rely on hitboxes to play neutral to actually deal with. After burner kick doesn't do much against things like that back air as it powers through another up air. Yeah, Topian Ray once again giving a lot of space to Tejus at the ledge. And on the one hand, it's nice. On the other hand, like, like uh, it lets uh, Tejus get back for kind of free-ish, but on the other hand, at least he doesn't get side beat and get dragged off the stage himself. In the meantime, though, okay, both of these two just holding shield in front of each other, recognizing the risk of just throwing out an out-of-shield option if it's not the right timing. Oh, speaking of the right timing, double side V into back air, closing out that stock exactly when he needed to. Tejus now has this lead. Let's see how much he can extend it, if at all. There are definitely ways that Utopian Ray can end the stock right here if he does place his cards carefully. That explosive flame, the last few frames of it just clipping Bayonetta. But at the moment, he's looking for an actual kill. The aggression from both these players just throwing out quick moves, but both of them are respecting it so much, finally just pulling back a little bit further. F-Tilt connecting, but F-Tilt is not really a kill move in this position. Okay, and this is it. This is where that single hit comes in. Already 47% on Palutena, and oh, he's looking for this kill, but Utopian Ray just can't seem to find it. He's aware of the risk of overextending neutral air. Not enough. How is he actually going to end the stock here? Okay, with a little bit of stage control now, Tejuice is just looking to rack on some damage with bullet arts. Even there, expending all these resources, but Utopian Ray gets hit by the up air. At this point, it's not a big, about big combos, it's about those tiny little hits that Tejuice is just continuously hitting on him while not letting himself overextend. 171%, he's still somehow alive. 
Palatina is not want for kill power, mind you. She has back throw, for instance, right there, finally, but 105%. Utopian Ray counterpicked this character, hoping it would be the answer, but at the moment, this is looking pretty grim for him. 122% and growing. Back this, is just coming out. This entire match, this entire game at least, feels like Teju's kind of realized that, hey, Attacking in this game is really, really good. And if he can just put out extra attacks, things to cover himself, things that find ways to land in unorthodox means, or at the very least things that are just plus on shield, like all of that and all, all of that movement, all of that offense is something Ray will have to respect, which means stage control is his 100% of the time. He lived to 173 because of it, and he's still thriving in this center stage because ABK and like hold uh, hold move up air, hold move neutral air, like they're just always in Ray's face and Ray's constantly respecting him because if he doesn't, he just starts eating 40, almost 50, 60 now. Like it just gets out of hand very quickly. You are Ray, this is looking mighty grim for yourself. Oh, look at this, even now they're just the single hit. It feels like Ray will get a single move and not be able to do that much with it. And meanwhile, Tejus just nicks him barely with an up B, and that's another 30-40%. Trying to catch the landings, but oh, that explosive flame a little bit too committal, especially when Tejus was right there to punish him. And now this is the point where Tejus still giving him lots of space, but always threatening with either a guns or an ABK or a back air. Yeah, now we're seeing those back airs coming out. Considering the fact that Utopian Ray is in fact in the corner, one of those at this point, sweet spot back air, will probably mean his death. Oh, that's gonna be Battle another, there. there it is finally, the up tilt to back air closing out. Game four, and that's gonna be Tejus taking it 3-1. Utopian Ray gonna be in loser's bracket where he is gonna have to uh -oh. face off uh, against a connection error. Hey, we'll see who he faces off against soon. <laughs> Oh, that's un that's uncharacteristic. But did he did he turn off rage quit? I I, I think I do, I mean I do want to point out just how good this sequence was because here let me let me see this we see eight we see the combo start right here like they just is doing what he normally does covering himself with attacks this second ABK like he's not at this position right here. Palutena is in front, so he doesn't, Ray doesn't want to die, so he's DIing this way. But as we, that arrow was terrible. But he's, he's DIing in, so he's not, because he's not trying to die at 150 on Town and City. There we go, thank you. You know what Teju does? Crosses him up with that back air. Catches him DIing poorly, blows him up for it. Like, that's the level of cognizance that sometimes Bayonetta's punish game really needs because you can you can hammer away at your B buttons all day and get like a 40% combo, 50% combo out of it. But finding the stocks off of combos at 150, that's where the true experience with the character that just comes with playing Bayonetta for a while really comes to show. And Tejus really demonstrated all of that in game three. Because even with the switch to Palutena and the different tools that she had, Teju still knew now, how to play around Ray. Yeah. Now, I do want to bring this up. Teju, he got second last week. Has he ever won a Xeno Wi-Fi? Let's find out. I don't believe he has. And so right now, he's sitting in Grand Finals, winner's side. This might be his first chance, and let's be honest here, there aren't going to be too many more of these. Bless. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. he's, he's, he really wants to. He really